First of all, thank you for taking time to join us for today's webinar. And uh, my name is Joe Hallman. I work here at Synapse as a uh, product marketing manager, and I'll be your host today. Um, in the Zoom interface, either at the top or the bottom of your screen, uh, you'll see a Q&A icon that let you type in questions to us uh, during the webinar, and we'll try to handle those. This just is the most efficient way of handling Q&A. We've got a big group like we do today. Uh, we'll try to take those as they come. If there's any left over, we'll uh, address those at the end of the presentation. Um, so Rob is joining us today. He's our speaker. Uh, he's our systems engineer. He's part of our uh, solutions engineering group. And uh, this is a team of professionals that you know, provide support and services to fixture manufacturers, uh, their agents, ultimately the, the customers that are using the lighting control systems. Um, so uh, Rob's been involved in a lot of different things. I think you guys saw the bio, but he's involved in our training programs, worked on a lot of different installations during his time at Synapse. And uh, he really brings a level of knowledge about our system that's really hard to match. So uh, really happy to have him with us. And with that, I'll let you uh, get started, mm -hmm. Rob. Take it away. All right. Sounds good. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, we're good, man. Okay. Um, so good afternoon, everybody. Uh, my name is Rob Paget, and I have been an engineer on our solutions engineering team here at Synapse for the past six years. I spend most of my time working with customers, and one of the things we regularly hear from them is that we're not like other controls providers in the market. Our customers say things like, you're different, your stuff just works, it's easy to use, you're a true partner. I do think there's something special about our culture and the way we approach solving problems for our customers, whether it's a large warehouse with thousands of lights or that small parking lot with 40 lights. We believe we have the right products and the right people to make sure Simply Snap is a success with your customers. Okay, so our goal this afternoon is to educate you about Simply Snap. Um, we want to help you sell it, we want to show you what applications it's a good fit for. Uh, what all is involved in the setup, that it's easy to use, your customers are going to love using it, and that we've got your back at all stages of the project so that you can deliver and build credibility with your customers. Now, our lighting controls are primarily focused into um, these categories of fixtures. So you've got your site and area lighting, your indoor high bays, and, uh, and, and parking structure lights. So in a lot of cases, our number one competitor is the customer choosing not to use controls at all. So we know we aren't the perfect fit for every situation, but I do wanna highlight the areas where we've uh, made a real difference for our customers. Um, some examples of that would be occupancy sensing at a retail shopping center where the lights uh, can turn on automatically at sunset and then switch to occupancy control after hours for security and energy savings. Daylight harvesting for that warehouse with the natural skylights um, where the customer has a local energy code they have to comply to, but they also want to get energy rebates and uh, save on their overall energy costs. Task tuning for the manufacturing plant where the customer has a different need for lighting levels in their facility. Maybe over their manufacturing line, they need the lights brighter and over in their storage area, they want the lights uh, dimmer. Secure communication. So if you've got a government facility uh, or a customer that's sensitive to security who needs all their wireless communication encrypted, uh, the controls have to run locally with no connection whatsoever to the internet. Talking to other systems for the multi-site enterprise that does want their gateways connected to the internet. They want to manage all their sites over their VPN from their existing building automation system. Every one of these is an example of a customer that we've worked with that has experienced the value of Simply Snap um, that we've added to either their new installation or their LED retrofit. Now we worked hard over the past couple of years to get our controls added to those site and area high bay garage fixtures from uh, the top lighting manufacturers. So that makes it so if you want to add Simply Snap to a parking lot, sports venue, public park, manufacturing facility, college campus, retail center, whatever, all you have to do is select the SKU from your manufacturer that includes uh, the controls already embedded. And this should sig um, significantly simplify the ordering process for you or for your customers. Um, but if you have a fixture for an application where the controls aren't already embedded, we have some options for that as well, um, which we'll cover here in a few minutes. Now, controls make a lot of sense in areas with more stringent energy codes. 
Oftentimes there are rebates involved with being compliant with the DLC or uh, energy codes like Title 24, Washington State Energy Code. Uh, in many cases, you can't even bid on a project if they aren't DLC listed. It's kind of a basic requirement that we regularly run into. We are listed on the DLC's qualified products list for indoor and outdoor. We've been working with them for years. Uh, we're even involved in the DLC committee that's working on the next version. Now, Title 24 has some very specific rules around how to maximize energy savings while still maintaining safe light levels um, for the users. And we've seen this pop up a lot more frequently uh, with parking garages. I've personally been through the audit process and I can attest to the fact that Simply Snap has the features and the tools to make sure that your customer passes the audit. Now we know that energy codes, regulations are always in flux and we're continuously developing Simply Snap to adapt to those. Uh, it's our job to make sure the controls comply with the codes and ensure that we can meet or exceed those regulations. So what all is involved in a Simply Snap lighting control system? Well, the first place to start is with the gateway. Uh, this is uh, a picture of our central base station. This is our gateway for indoor and outdoor applications. You can think of this as the brains of the operation. It's what talks to all the lights and sensors. It's what the customer logs into to get into the user interface. And it also has a five button switch on the front for manual control of the lights. There are plenty of people that still like to uh, control their lights at the push of a button and we can accommodate them. Now one gateway typically manages up to about 500 lights. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we've worked really hard to get our controllers embedded uh, in high bay area and parking garage fixtures from the leading fixture manufacturers so that you can put Simply Snap into a whole host of different applications like the ones from that uh, slide earlier. You know all the names of the ones we work with. If you're interested in finding out which fixtures we've already done integration with, uh, just reach out to us after the webinar and we can help you with that. Now, if you have a fixture with a NEMA socket uh, or you've got a retrofit project, um, we have solutions for those as well. Um, we have a twist lock controller. There's, there's a 277 volt and a 480 volt version. They have built-in photo cells. They can integrate in uh, with a motion sensor and they'll fit any standard seven pin NEMA socket that you typically find on a parking lot or a street light fixture. For LED retrofits, we have an IP65 rated controller, uh, the DIM10220 that you can pull mount um, or you can put in the half inch nipple uh, threaded connector on, on the fixture. For larger enterprises, warehouses, manufacturing customers, most of them already have some sort of building automation or building management system in place um, that's controlling their HVAC, air handler, security, uh, maybe even controlling other lighting controls. Not having the ability to integrate with those systems is usually a non-starter for those customers. So that's where the BMS gateway comes in. Um, this is what enables Simply Snap to talk to those uh, building automation systems that the customers already have. Now for those Title 24 daylight harvesting applications that uh, we talked about previously, we have a thousand foot candle wireless daylight harvesting sensor that is a great fit for those applications. Uh, another thing that's cool about that sensor is it also can handle occupancy detection. So it can be installed in strategic locations um, throughout, you know, either outdoor or indoor facility where there may not already be motion detection uh, embedded in the fixture. And then the last accessory I'll cover is uh, we have a wireless switch. People still love to press buttons to control their lights. And the gateway has the built-in five button switch, um, but this product gives you the ability to distribute that push button control to other locations at the customer site. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, how all this would work together at a typical customer site. So as soon as the lights and the gateway are all powered up, they're able to communicate. Even before the site's commissioned, the contractor on site can use the push buttons on the front to test the lights. Um, the gateway doesn't have to be close enough to talk to all of the lights. It just has to be close enough to talk to a few of the lights. And the lights uh, can relay messages to and from other sensors. And the way we do this is very unique. This is kind of our special sauce. Um, maybe in a future webinar, we can cover this in more detail if you'd like. But what I want you to get from today's presentation is that it really works and it's really fast. 
And I'm actually gonna demonstrate this to you uh, in this short video. Um, so now set, let me set the scene here. This is, I'm at one of our customers and uh, I've got an iPhone in one hand shooting video and then I've got an iPad in my other hand and I'm changing the dimming levels. And you'll notice there are skylights in this building. So even when I turn the lights off, there's still quite a bit of light, um, but you can clearly see the lights responding to the dimming commands. When the text hits the screen on the video, that's me changing the dimming of the from my iPad. And then you'll see for yourself how quickly the system responds. Now I'm starting at 100%, I go to 50% dimming, then 25% dimming, then off, and then back on again. So let me pause this share and switch over to the QuickTime video. All right, here we go. All right, I'm gonna play it one more time just because it's pretty fast. It's only a few seconds long. Um, just keep your eyes on the lights up at the top and you'll see them flicker when the uh, dimming commands go out. Hey Rob, check your um, screen share. I think you're oh, still yeah. on the presentation. Thank you. There we go, resume share. Can you guys see the video okay? Yep, we have it now, thank you. Okay, all right, let me try again. All right, and since the first time failed, I'll go ahead and uh, do it one more time so you can see. That one came through? Yes. All right, great, thanks, Jamie. All right, so let me switch, pause that share, we'll go back to the presentation. Okay, so you could see how they responded. That was a very large customer, thousands of lights, hundreds of sensors, there's multiple gateways. So if we can handle relaying messages between lights that fast in that environment, we can easily handle just about every application you can throw at it. All right, make sure the share worked. I, you see a connect on your terms now? Yep, you're good, man. All right, great. All right, so now let's talk about how to manage Simply Snap. Where's everything set up? The scenes, the schedule, daylight harvesting. How does the customer make changes to the system if they wanna override their current schedule, turn the lights on or check the status of a light? Well, there are two different approaches we're gonna talk about. And the first one is local access. So this is plenty for most customers. Oftentimes after a site is commissioned, customers won't ever have to touch the system again, but if they want to, they can use, um, one of the ways they can do that is with the local Wi-Fi, so they can go get within, you know, 100 feet or so of the gateway with their phone or their tablet, laptop, whatever, and then uh, connect into the gateway over its local Wi-Fi network, or they can connect it up to their LAN and manage it from any other device, you know, on their campus that's also connected into that LAN. Now, the other option uh, is remote access, so they could, uh, that same LAN that they connected the gateway in for local management, as long as they can get out to the internet, um, that could be an option for them, or they could use the built-in cellular if there's no hardwire ethernet. And there's a couple benefits to that. All of the central base station gateways, all of our gateways ship with a built-in cellular radio. And so the customer could use that for um, accessing it and putting it on the internet, or we can use it. So we do a lot of our commissioning remotely, and so that, that's how we can get into the customer site remotely turn on the, the modem and log into it. And the other benefit of that is down the road, you know, let's say six months after it's commissioned, they have a question or a problem, we can turn it on, log into the site, and then get an exact, see exactly what's happening with the system. Now, why would a customer want to connect their gateway to the internet? Um, the first reason would be that they want to manage the gateway from anywhere. So if the gateways are able to connect online, then they could use our add-on cloud service, Simply Snap Illuminate, to get access to the gateway from anywhere. It doesn't require any additional hardware. It's extremely easy to use. You just go to simplysnapcloud.com, 
And after you enter your username and password, you'll see a list of your gateways that you can connect to. Uh, we recently had a customer that had started with a single site. They eventually expanded to five different you know, locations um, throughout their, their city. They were all managed locally over that time, but they wanted to give access to some of their facilities people to control the lights remotely so they could stop having to send them out on site to locally connect to the gateway and turn the lights on. So this service was something they were very um, easily able to add and it saved them truck rolls to the site. The other advantage it gives you um, the cloud service is that you're able to manage multiple gateways from a single user interface. So I mentioned earlier that a single gateway typically manages up to about 500 lights. So let's say you've got a site with 2000 lights. Um, you're gonna need more than one gateway, right? So you can set up each gateway to run autonomously and that is fine. Uh, we have plenty of customers who do that. But if you want to have all of the ga gateways talk to each other, to be able to go to a single web address, to be able to access it from anywhere, to control and manage and look at the map, make a change to the system, uh, Illuminate makes a lot of sense for those customers. We just had a customer um, with a parking garage who um, was managing each of their gateways locally, independently for over a year. Um, they decided they wanted to see everything from a single map, uh, make it a little bit easier to manage. And uh, we were able to easily accommodate that request without having to need, uh, install any additional hardware. Um, now that we know the different ways to connect and manage Simply Snap, what does it actually look like when they log in? Everyone who's had a chance to use our user interface firsthand loves it because of its simplicity. Uh, we're fanatical about the user experience. Um, these are some of the things in our conversations with our users that we've heard that our user interface has to have. The interface has to be intuitive. They wanna be able to make changes to the system themselves without having to open a ticket with our support team. When you log in, you can easily control all of your lights quickly, see what's going on with the system, and you can access it from any device with a browser. It works great on Apple, Android, Windows, whatever. You don't have to download anything, it just works. The user interface has to be flexible. You can set up the lights to operate any way the customer wants them to, if they want them on a schedule, we can do that. If they wanted to be controlled by a sensor, we can do that. If they wanna change the way the push buttons control the lights, we can set that up as well. Our users want a user interface that uh, updates in real time. You can always log into the system and see exactly what's going on with the lights and sensors and how much energy the system is consuming. And this is important because this is what enables us to find problems. We can use the real-time power data to proactively send the customer an email if there's a problem with the light, whether it's due to a power issue or a hardware failure. If users want uh, the interface to work from anywhere, the user, um, then they, they require it to work from anywhere and we're able to accommodate that as well. Um, it works great from a desktop uh, as well as it does from mobile. Our attention to our users is why we get the kinds of feedback you see on this slide here. Uh, our design process incorporates real user feedback. We test new features. Um, we, we actually do them as product concepts in our design sprints with real users before we even go deep into the design process or even close to a release. And I think this is a big distinction for us. That results in a product that the customers actually want uh, to use uh, and it's easy to use. And I'm one of the users of the system I use it almost every day. Um, it's just as intuitive for a power user like myself as it is for a non-technical customer. Now, after you've spent all the time working on a spec and putting out the bid, you've won the project, the most important piece of the puzzle that's left is actually delivering for the customer. Uh, in our opinion, the most important thing you can do to deliver is to nail the commissioning. We've learned a ton over the years of the right way to do commissioning projects. We know it's so much more than just configuration. So let's talk through at a high level what a Simply Snap commissioning service, what our service looks like. We do all of the project management. Uh, that's key. We spend, we spend a lot of time on that. Um, it is by far the most important step in the process. We coordinate the installation of the lighting agent, electrician, customer, all the parties that are involved to make sure everyone is on the same page, you know, with when the installation commissioning is happening. 
We review the capabilities of the system with the customer. Oftentimes they don't fully understand all the things our system is capable of. So we sit down and have that conversation and then we make sure that we configure the system to meet the customer's expectations. We test all the lights and sensors to make sure everything is working after the installation. Uh, and we train the customer on how to use the system. And lastly, we support the customer. We're the, the same team that sets it up and trains the customer on the system, the same ones that do the support for the customer down the road if they have any problems. And we found that our customers are very happy with the attention to detail that we put into our commissioning process. Now there are three primary levels of commissioning, uh, remote, smart hands, and premium. Remote commissioning, this is how we do most of our projects. So even if the customer doesn't have the gateway connected to the internet, we can access it remotely over the cellular modem and uh, set it up and do the testing. Uh, there are times when we need the customer uh, to help us validate something we discovered during the testing or setup. And um, if you don't, if either the customer doesn't want to be a part of that or you, you don't want the customer to be a part of it, smart hands might be another option for you. So we have a network of technicians all over North America that can act as our smart hands. Um, you could sign up also to be a smart hands technician for your customer. And there are a few advantages if you decide to do that um, that we think that might be compelling to you. So it gives you an opportunity to be more involved in the project, see how Simply Snap works, helps you build a stronger relationship with the customer, which could potentially lead to more sales. Um, and then lastly, it's an opportunity for you to earn a few hundred bucks. And um, the last option is premium. And so this would be where we do all of it on site. So we're gonna fully commission, train, do all the testing. And this is typically, for larger projects, but if you've got a smaller project that's strategic in nature and you just want us on site to take care of it all, then that, that's another option as well. I wanted to share the highlights of a conversation I had um, about our commissioning services with a customer recently. This is a multi-site property manager who was doing a retrofit and they were planning on using our commissioning services for the first few projects and then doing the rest themselves. And after working with us, they changed their mind. And so here's some of the things um, that he told me in our conversation. Um, I used to view commissioning as a widget, as a checkbox. Most lighting projects we've done in the past have had issues, but we've had no idea what the issues were, what was causing them or how to fix them. I've watched how carefully Synapse does commissioning. I've never experienced commissioning services that will manage the projects while working hand in hand with the on-site electrical contractors to provide them the knowledge they need to resolve problems. I work with so many vendors and no one does it like Synapse. Most companies have a technical person that is knowledgeable, but finding who they are is difficult. They aren't accessible and usually aren't involved in delivering the support and services. I wanted to let you know how much I appreciate what Synapse brings to the table. And uh, I think that's an awesome testimonial to the value that we bring uh, when we do uh, the commissioning for your customers. I do wanna highlight a couple of our other services that uh, may be a benefit to you. We do have a professional certification course that you can sign up for if you wanna do the commissioning yourself, um, or if you just wanna become an expert in Simply Snap. Also, if you've got a fixture that your customer wants to use or you wanna sell and it's not on you know, your manufacturer's integrated list, but you, you wanna use it, you wanna integrate our controllers, you can use our fixture integration service. And what we do here is we'd wire up the controller to the drivers and sensor, we test everything we provide you with the documentation that shows you how to install it and um, that you can provide to your fixture manufacturer to make sure it's integrated properly, um, which is a huge deal. It's gonna save you a ton of time. If it's not done right, then you've gotta pay electricians to, to fix the wiring out in the field. So that is another option uh, that we offer. Now there are plenty of Simply Snap systems after their commission where customers never have to touch it again. But whenever a customer does need us, we're here to help. Our support and engineering teams are very responsive, as you can see from some of these comments. When you open a ticket with us, you know you're gonna to talk to someone who is an expert and will be very responsive to your problems. Our design and support teams are right here in Huntsville. Uh, here's a Zoom snapshot I grabbed from a meeting on Monday with a few of us uh, from engineering and support. Everything you see in Simply Snap, hardware, software, wireless, the user interface, it's all designed by our team. We own the whole thing. And I think that is a big differentiator for us in the industry. Uh, it makes us very efficient and flexible in responding to our customer needs. For me, working in support, uh, if I run into a problem or I just need to know the answer 
to something. I need to know how something works. I know exactly where to go uh, to find the answer. We're not a large company. Um, there are about 70 of us and we really enjoy working together. We have fun. We have a low turnover rate. Our culture is all about helping each other, helping make our customers happy. You can be sure that we will not leave you out to dry. We'll be there to have your back so that you can build lasting credibility with your customers. I do want to read this quote that's on the slide. Um, this is from an engineer at one of the fixture manufacturers that we work with. I've received more support than I expected from an external company. I feel like there's a family connection. The interesting thing is it doesn't seem like we're getting special treatment. It just feels like it's the spirit of Synapse. Other outside companies seem to gravitate towards finger pointing with Synapse. It seems like they actually want to help. We are problem solvers. That's inherently what we do well. Um, if you think you need any help whatsoever, please let us know. One way you can always reach out to us, you could open a ticket, um, support.synapsewireless.com. Uh, our sales and support team will see all of those. Um, you could also send an email to control.freak at synapsewireless.com. Uh, this is a lot of new information today. So if you have an application you aren't sure about, if you have any questions about a potential spec or bid, uh, we're absolutely willing and able uh, to assist you. All right, Joe, I'm gonna hand it back to you. Yeah, thanks, Ralph, nice job. Um, so like I said before, the Q&A button is at the bottom or the top, depending on what kind of device you're using. Uh, we've had a few questions come in. Uh, if you think of any, you can type those in and we'll uh, continue. Uh, one question just popped up. So will you send out this meeting or PowerPoint? Uh, we're absolutely gonna send out a link to the recording of this, um, probably be tomorrow. I think they have to process the uh, recording, uh, but that should be available. So that will definitely be uh, a follow-up that we'll send to you. Probably send some links to some other information too. Uh, so be looking forward uh, to getting that uh, tomorrow. Um, got a, a question here, Rob, about just occupancy sensors. So are there examples or brands or types of occupancy sensors that you guys prefer or work with? Sure. Um, so most of our controllers have the ability to interface with an occupancy sensor or a daylight sensor. Um, so if the, the fixture manufacturer, some of them, they've already got ones on their line card that they integrate with. Uh, we work with, I mean, pretty much any standard DC motion sensor that can talk to our controllers from watt stopper. Uh, that's a big one. There's several like the 211, the 201, um, IR tech sensor switch. I mean, there's a bunch out there that we work with. We actually on our website, if you go to help.synapsewireless.com uh, on our support site, we do have a list of ones we've tested with. Um, if you've got one you're not sure about that you don't see on that list that you want, that your customer wants, or you want to sell into an application, you absolutely reach out to us and we can take a look at the data sheet and get a pretty good idea of whether it'll work with our system. Um, and we do have that, you know, the one that, uh, the wireless occupancy and daylight sensor, the one that we make and sell, um, which, you know, is just an out-of-box solution that, that will work with our system. All right, perfect. Uh, another one popped in from uh, Charles. It says, can you integrate with other systems via an API or other methods besides the BMS? Yes, so um, the, the BMS gateway, you know, talks over standard protocols uh, to building automation systems uh, without getting super technical, like BACnet and Modbus, if you heard those terms, that's how those work. Um, but one of the things that enables us to talk to our building management system is our API. So we do have a REST API and we have a GraphQL API in the cloud. Um, so either whether it's you know, at the customer premise or it's in the remote access application, um, we do have that, that we can interface with really just about anything. So we've, we've interfaced with all sorts of different systems that people have come up with. Um, so we can uh, provide that you know, documentation that's part of a license add-on feature that we have, absolutely. Gotcha. All right, continued. The uh, next one pops up is about um, just power consumption, power monitoring. Um, I guess just, can you describe kind of the, the different ways that we can can get the power information? Sure. Um, so this is asking, this is asking specifically about a dolly drive. Okay, yeah, that's is that, kind is of what that I was the, Is that the only way or what are the, yeah. what are the methods, right? Okay, um, so there's really two primary methods uh, the, the kind of modern method would be like over Dolly 2. So the driver itself we're getting power data from. 
If you don't have a smart driver that has a Dolly 2 interface, then we do have controllers like our twist lock, uh, that dimmed Hin 220 that I showed you earlier, um, that have onboard power monitoring capabilities. So they're, they're sitting in the circuit in series from you know, the line power that's coming in uh, to uh, the driver. So we're actually able to monitor you know, utility grade power from those lights. And then the, that power data is all sent up to the gateway. So those are kind of the two primary mechanisms for, for doing power monitoring. Right, I don't see any uh, other questions that we didn't cover during the presentation. So uh, I think with that, you know, we were shooting for 30 minutes. We we're right at uh, 130 uh, by my clock, 131 actually. So we're uh, right on target. I think uh, we'll just wrap it up. And if you guys have other questions, feel free to reach out direct to us. Um, and again, we'll send out an email with a link to uh, the webinar from today. And I look forward to future uh, events and just uh, have a rest, a good rest of your day and a, a nice weekend. And we'll talk to you again soon. So thanks. Thanks, everybody.